a loss of about a yard. It'll bring up a second and 11. And if I was Bellflower, I would continue to go to the air because outside of the one big running play, they have had no success on the ground. Concentrating on defense are the Monsoons to stop Jones. So they've got a big eye open for that middle, up the middle play, you know. And uh, Bellflower is pretty well known for running that up the middle play. Yeah, as you can tell that their uniforms remind you of one team in the uh, NFL. Redskins. Uh, the Redskins? That's right. And they have a couple of players on there that really would like to run like John Riggins. Well, I don't think they uh, <laughs> are running like John Riggins so far tonight. Would but, like uh, to. <laughs> we all would like to, perhaps. I think we'd all would like to make the money that John Riggins yes, made running. Yes, but like I don't that. want that pain. <laughs> Bellflower has, or rather, Mayfair has called a defensive timeout. And you know, Don, right now the, the Mayfair guys are probably thinking that, you know, we've got to dig in here and stop Bellflower. We've seen that our offense can move the ball. And I would think that this would be a big lift for them to be able to stop Bellflower here. And although they have shown no signs of being able to do so, perhaps they could dig in here and really keep the bite box the out nails. of the end zone. Yeah. 8.30 to go in the, or rather 9.30 to go in the first half. I think we're going to see a big, big change in the offense for Bellflower. I think they're going to go back to the air. You know, uh, the coaching staff for Bellflower, I don't know if it's true or not, but aren't they all brothers? Of Bellflower? Yeah. Uh, I don't believe so. Well, There's a few brothers on there, but I don't think well, they're all brothers. Three of them. They are all three of them. Mike, Rick. Robinson now to gives inside the sin, and he gets about two yards. And I'll bring up, uh, well, I believe he got the first down. Yes, he did. So it'll bring up another first and ten situation, and Bellflower continues to move the football against Mayfair's defense. Monsoons couldn't hold him on that play. Sitting Ross checks back in, and I have noticed, Don, that Sean Jones is limping on and off the field, so I think that Coach Harrington would probably want to rest him tonight if the Bucks get out to a couple of touchdown lead because he just isn't himself, and they'll need him for the playoffs, and you can see he's not in there right now. He was limping the last week, too, around the end of the game. So perhaps we will not see the fine back Sean Jones anymore. Robinson drops the throw. He's under pressure, and Tito Ortiz has him and drops him. Back at the 40-yard line, loss of about 11 yards. Chris Kearney also in on the stop. I think Robinson, if he hadn't have slipped on his left foot, you notice when he went back, his left foot just a uh, little bit slipped from underneath him, and he lost his balance, and he wasn't able to move up into that pocket, so he'd be able to get that pass off. Well, they've been feeling the heat all night from Tito Ortiz on the right side over there, and Chris that Kearney. Rusher. Yep. That's right. Ortiz coming from his right outside linebacker, left outside linebacker spot. Robinson now with Sin, the lone man in the backfield, three wide receivers, and he drops the throw. Again under pressure, steps up in the pocket and throws. The ball is complete to Sinton Ross. He breaks into the open field. He's still going, and he's finally brought down after a fine run by a host of monsoon tacklers, but not before he picks up first down yardage. I believe it's close to a first down anyway. Fine run, fine catch and run by Sinton Ross there. He was in the open, caught the ball, broke to the middle of the field, avoided a couple of tacklers, may have gotten close to first down yardage. Well, Robinson didn't do too bad back there, stepping up into that pocket while he had to scramble a little bit to get there. And then once he saw his target, he let loose on that ball with a rifle pitch. He is throwing under some heavy pressure so far this evening. and They do have a very strong five-man rush on that front line, the, def the uh, defensive line. Mayfair blitzing on every play with Tito Ortiz coming from the outside, and they've been able to pressure Robinson, but not enough. They need to get to him just a step quicker before he lets the ball go. And now the officials are seem to be warning both sidelines of maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit of hot tempers going on out there on the field. They want to calm things down somewhat. Uh, well, you know, no foul, roughing the passer on the defense. 15-yard penalty, an automatic first. Well, a tough penalty first for the Monsoons there. Definitely. Roughing the passer penalty, and that's uh, something that they did not need. No, they didn't. You know, Mike, once a passer steps up into his pocket and he's already released the ball, I know your momentum carries you pretty far, but this is something that a lot of coaches try to teach their offensive, their, yeah, the defensive line, is that you jump away. After you see that ball has been released, try to jump in the other direction because you cannot afford no costly penalties like this for 15 yards. You do that twice, that's 30 yards. First, Bellflower accepts the penalty in the automatic first down, which nullifies the fine reception and run by Ross. 
but to no avail. Inside handoff now to Paul Sinney. Breaks into the open field again. He could go. Finally dragged down by Fapito. Fapito, or no, excuse me, it wasn't Fapito, it was Watson dragging him down along with Kareem Goldsby making a stop down at the five yard line. And I'll tell you, Mr. Sin having himself a fine evening. He's got to be close to the 100 yard mark already on the ground. Let's look at the replay. See the replay here. Right by Fapito and a huge hole up the middle. Chris Kearney can't get to him. Heath can't get to him. Look at Finally, those Goldsby's going to catch up to him here on the angle and bring him down, but not before it's a first and goal for Bellflower. That's what you call one of those tiger clutches. First and goal to give inside to Sin, and he is in the end zone for the touchdown. But he fumbled, he fumbled, the, fumbled ball. the football, but Bellflower recovered, and I'm not sure who came up with it down there. It must have been Sin, because when you fumble the ball inside the five-yard line, the man who fumbled it has to recover it, otherwise it cannot be a touchdown. So it is a score, and Bellflower goes up now 12 nothing. Second score on the night for Paul Sin, and he certainly has over 100 yards rushing, probably close to 110 by this point. Danny Snyder will come on now and try to attempt the extra point. He was unsuccessful, but but there was 12 men on the field on his first attempt. Then Bellflower elected to go for two and couldn't get in, which was unfair. So we'll see if they go for two here or just the extra point. They are going to go for two to try and make up for the miss the first time down there. Robinson at quarterback. And we'll see what the Bucks do. And now he's going to call timeout and maybe think better of it. He looked over the monsoon defense and perhaps didn't like what he see. And let's stay right here and see what the Bucks are going to do with it. You know, it looked to me when he was carrying the ball across the goal line, it looked like his knee was down first. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I believe he had run over one of the tacklers is what he did. He ran right over Eric Mitchell over there. And I, I think that's what pretty much kept him from hitting the ground. Bobby Sheehan also was in on that side from his inside linebacker spot, but he couldn't stop Paul Sin either. Paul Sin playing with a lot of aggressive aggressiveness this evening in his last regular season ball game. And there you can see Coach Leon Ward in the background. He certainly uh, has had somewhat of a disappointing season, but He's waiting for halftime so he can chew his guys out. But congratulate the uh, defense because they have been doing a terrific job here. Well, the monsoon defense has actually hurt themselves with a couple of penalties and two very costly ones. I don't know. I wouldn't say they've been doing a great job, Don, but they've been holding their own. Let's put it that way. Okay. And they're getting a little talking to right here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. I will do so. Anyway. Bellflower again will try attempt to attempt a two-point conversion with 6.57 to go in the first half. Mike Weiss along with Don Morris, American Cable Systems, continuing cover to high school football. Our last ball game of the year. And the fake pitch, play action pass over the middle. Did he hang on? No. Sitton Ross could not hang on to the ball. And again, Bellflower fails to convert on the two-point conversion attempt. They lead 12 to nothing and we'll be right back after this. Seconds to go in the first half. Bellflower trying to up their record to seven and two. Mayfair looking for a way to end their season on a bright note by being their crosstown rivals. They come into the game with a three and six record. Thomas Mann kicks it off deep and Maurice Morton with the ball at the five yard line. He's to the 20, the 25, the 30, breaks to the outside, trying to get away from Cedric Robbins, gives him a straight arm and gets by him, but not too much further. He stopped there. Kevin Lazard, and now we got another penalty flag down and we'll see that might not have been a face mask penalty. Came in awfully late, so it's gotta be some type of a personal foul. And we'll see what the call is from the official. And at this point, Mayfair's got to be hoping it's going to go against Bellflower because they have had some crucial penalties that have hurt themselves. Something they don't need any more of. And I believe they're going to march it off First against no the Monsoons. Blue. It went against them too, Mike. So another tough break for the Monsoons as they 
start to dig themselves quite a big hole here in the early going of this football game. 6.49 to go in the first half. They trail 12-0. Bellflower failing to convert on two two-point conversion tries so far in the first half. I can see number seven, though, Mayfair's quarterback saying, don't worry, don't worry, I'll get us out of it. And that's Dave Parton, of course. <laughs> and now the officials are calling a timeout, I think, to check the yard marker. And actually, the yard marker was had not been moved after the penalty. That's what the delay will be just momentarily. And we'll be ready to get underway once again. And I'm sure that the monsoons are going to be Looking to get something going on offense here, trying to keep their defense off the field. And, of course, they established a good drive the first time they had the football. Went down all the way to the Bellflower four-yard line. And on fourth down, they went for it, couldn't get it in, and they neglected, to try and they neglected the field goal attempt. Didn't want to give that a shot. Went for the touchdown. I guess when you're three and six, you're playing your arch rival, you're going to go out there and try and win. But uh, I don't know if they should have foregone the field goal try. A lot of these situations make you give it all you got. You have to dig down deep inside of you and make yourself believe you can do it. Nothing can stop you. A little inspirational note there from Don Morris. Dave Parton on the pitch outside. Eric Mitchell trying to get out there. He fumbles the ball again, but it went out of bounds before Paul Sin could jump on it over there along with Cedric Robbins. And Eric Mitchell seems to have a hard time holding on to the football. Well, if we can get a replay on that, I'd like to see how he held that ball. Well, obviously not very well because he dropped it before he was even hit. Here we go, right here. You can see he's pitching it off to him right here. Now watch the way he tucks away this ball. He's holding it in his left hand, but he's not holding it securely. And right, right here where he gets hit, he's getting grabbed right on his left arm. And the ball pops right out. That's what I was explaining to most of our fans earlier. If you don't tuck away that ball, a lot of college scouts will hold that against you. John Hanna causing the fumble that time. Second and 10 for the Monsoons. They trail it 12 nothing. Inside handoff to Heath, and he goes nowhere. Maybe a yard. Probably nothing, though. Paul Sin on the stop. Robert McPherson also on the stop that time for the Buck defense. And there you can see him right there warming up for the playoffs. And they will find out Monday afternoon, of course, who they take on in the first round. Even if they should lose tonight, they would most likely get an at-large or wild-card berth with a 6-3 and three record. Uh, you're going to probably make the playoffs, and most likely a 7-2 and two record will put them in for sure. 6-3 and three would most likely get them in. Third and 10 now. Parton out of the shotgun with Heath in the backfield along with Morton. Parton back to throw the ball. He's under pressure coming to this side of the field. The ball is way overthrown. Ball intended for Danny Perez on this side of the field and uh, far overthrown. Good coverage by Kevin Lazard over there. A well-thrown ball might have actually been picked off. So Yeah, but he overjudged his distance on Kevin Perez. Well, that's position. an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> he threw it about seven or eight yards out of bounds, and so now <laughs> punting time for the Monsoons. Let's be nice, Mike. <laughs> Let's be nice. <laughs> Phil Roberts on to kick it away for Mayfair. Low snap, he handles it well, and the kick is away. Fielded on the far side of the field by Danny Snyder. He's at the 50, the 45, brought down at the 45-yard line. Nice tackle by Eric Mitchell over there, along with Steve Melendez. And that's where Bellflower will take over. They lead it 12-0 with 6.13 to go in the first half. Bellflower trying to pick up their seventh win of the year with Lawrence Robinson at the helm, though his first start. There you see Coach Leon Ward encouraging the troops, telling Phil Roberts a nice boot, and it was a pretty fair kick. He handled that uh, low snap pretty well, but you know, Bellflower had a big problem with low snaps, bad snaps, all last week, too. So we'll see if the Bucks punt that, see how their kicking game's going so far. Lawrence Robinson again in his first start, replacing the injured Mike Simmons. And throwing deep downfield, he's got Ross down there, can't hold on. Fingertips off. Sitting Ross couldn't hold on to the ball. Damian Watson and Steve Bue defending down there. And that was a, a well-thrown pass. And had Sitton Ross continued to run, he might have come right under it. Instead, he pulled up a little bit and had to make a leaping try. He couldn't hang on. A tough catch indeed, though. Well, you can see that that ball just popped right off the tip of his fingers. And like you said, if he had ran just a little bit faster, I don't know if he had all his turbos cut in. 
he would have had it right into the palm of his hand and the end zone would have been inbound. Second and 10 now for the Bucks. Right at the midfield, at the 45 yard line stripe. Pitch out to Thomas Mann and he gets about five, maybe six yards. Sapito Sapito with the tackle. You know, Second and five now for Belfour. Thomas Mann is a very strong runner. I really like to see him go up the middle because every time he goes through the middle, he usually carries about two or three guys with him before he gets brought down. So Mann with his second carry of the evening. Third and five now for Bellflower in the first third and long situation that they've been faced with this evening. And I would suspect that, Ro suspect that Robinson will probably drop the throw of the football. He's had some success tonight. 4.30 to go in the first half. Good throwing arm. Robinson's Bellflower Buccaneers lead it 12 to nothing. Here in the final Suburban League matchup of the year. And Robinson drops the throw, a quick one over the middle, and it was intended for Kevin Lazard, but he threw it behind him. And Lazard was breaking open over the middle, but Robinson had to get rid of the ball, and he could not complete the pass. Yeah, he so was fourth and five now, Don. We'll see if the Bucks kick it away. Well, you know, he was pretty much blitzed right on that play, even though he stepped into the pocket. I think he had somebody that was just about ready to grab that throwing arm. And uh, just as he released, it looked like somebody got a finger on it because it was a little wobbly, and he throws a pretty good spiral. Well, no doubt feeling the heat, and as you can, as you mentioned earlier, Don, the Bucks having trouble with their kicking game, and they're going to go for it here on fourth down, thinking that uh, they could could might as well throw one deep or go for the yardage here, and we'll see what they do do. Fourth and down, Robinson drops the throw, play action fake. Now he looks back to his right and throws over, throwing intended for Paul Sin, and he took a shot as he went out of bounds, and, uh, and that's where Mayfair will take over on downs. That's a weakness that's not too not, not a good, good one to have. You've no. got to be able to kick the football away. Yeah, and Paul, I mean, um, Robinson, he had some good coverage. You know, he, he had plenty of time to pick out his receiver. He had plenty of time to aim the ball. And uh, I don't know what happened. He got if a little he'd have been able to tuck it and run it there, Don, if he'd have looked around, he would have realized that he had the entire right side of the field open, and he might have been able to pick up first down yardage. That's true. His field vision wasn't working on that play. <laughs> Better turn it on next time. <laughs> Four fifteen to go in the second it. quarter. Bellflower leading 12 0. Dave Parton brings the monsoons up, trying to get something going. Give in the backfield to Dennis Heath. He gets about three, maybe four yards. And he's piling his way through there like a tractor. Bring up a second and six situation. Robert McPherson on the stop that time. Along with Bart Bram. A lot of Bellflower fans sitting on the other side of the field tonight, something that they do only every other year when Mayfair is the home team in this game. So it's probably a little little bit of a different feel for them to watch the game from that side of the field. You know, Mike, with a minute 30 seconds to go in the game, you kind of wonder how come uh, Mayfair doesn't try to go with a nice, pretty pass for about 15 yards. Well, there, that's probably because there's about three minutes and 20 seconds left on. Under the heavy rush, Parton is going to be hit and dropped back there by 64. Jorge Varguez, a nice stop by Varguez. And you said it correctly, Don, so I went ahead and did it. <laughs> 3.10 to go. Third and about 13 now as Parton was dropped on that play. Let's look at the replay here, Don. You can see he, was, he just got the bad snap. No, that was a good snap. He drops back. He's looking for his target. And it looks like he slips right there a little bit. He's got a blitz coming right in his face. Or a Varguez on the stunt off of his inside defensive tackle position. And he was able to drop Parton. That's the first sack of the night of Parton for the Buccaneers. 2.40 to go in the first half. Mike Weiss along with Don Roberts. Glad you could tune in. Don, Don Morris. Don Morris, I'm sorry. It's like a combination of Don Morris and Nick Roberts. <laughs> Nick not here tonight. Parton to throw out of the backfield. He swings it to Maurice Morton. He picks up about 10, 11. Now he's knocked out of bounds right at about the first down marker. A nice little screen pass. Oh, good throw. Good throw. Good run. And I believe he has first down yardage. Thomas Mann on the stop along with John Hanna, but not before Morton was able to pick up first down yardage. Let's look at the... Uh, that's not the right replay. That's the one before. Here you go, the screen pass to Morton. Right behind the yard of scrimmage, you can see where Morton's turning up field now. He sees he's got some air. He's gonna, he says, I'm going to go down the sideline here. I can, uh, I can run a tightrope. 
But he's got that tiger claw right on his back, and he's brought down by two off in, I mean, defensives. Thomas Mann with the stop that time for Bellflower. Parton turns and gives it to Eric Mitchell out of the backfield. This time Eric holds on to the football. Gain of about three. It will pick up a second seven. 2-10 to go in the first half. 12-0 Bellflower. And I'll tell you, Don, if, Ma if Mayfair could put a quick score on the board here, that'd give him a lot of momentum going into halftime. Oh, man, would it? <laughs> It would make the game a lot more interesting. And you never want to see a, a one-sided game, especially, especially when you have two good players, I mean, two good teams. Especially your last game of the year, possibly the last of your career if you're a Mayfair player. And In the senior. again, Eric Mitchell with a big haul up the middle, and I believe he's going to be very close to first down yardage, perhaps a yard short. Mitchell lightning quickness out of the backfield he's shown so far, but he hasn't been able to hold on to the football. But you can see 66, he's very good. 66, he's, he's, he's very good at having that bear trap. You know, when a, when a player runs right past him, he can take his arms and he can just grab both of your legs together and bring you down with no problem. Well, that's Greg Lucero. He's also the offensive center for the Buccaneers, and he's playing a fine football game defensively tonight. However, the Bucs have shown some weakness against the run here, and again, there's Martin up the middle, and that time, McPherson and Lucero on the stop, and I don't believe Martin got the first down, and they're gonna have to measure with a minute to go exactly in the first half, and actually, Bellflower is gonna call a timeout. It's gonna be real close to first down yardage. Let's see if he got it. There you can see Maurice Morton explaining to Eric Mitchell what to do on a play like that in short yardage. And he says, hey, babe, you got to put your head down and go forward. You can't run into a play like that straight up because they're going to be able to stand you up and stop you from where you want to go. And there you can see, Don, about a yard probably to go for the first down. Yeah, I suspect that they're going to try to take it. Lucero, though, he's, something that, he's somebody that you really have to watch because see, he waits at home for the play to develop, and he waits for that runner to come right up the middle. And that's why he is a very good defender in the center position. Like I said, he's got those bear trap arms. He's big, you know, 215 pounds. He can fall on anybody and make them lose their balance. And he's got to get there first. <laughs> but he has played a... As long as the play comes his way, he doesn't have to go too far. Yeah. He has played a good ball game so far tonight from his defensive tackle spot. That's one thing we'll be looking at for the rest of the evening, Paul, or Don. I have a lot of different names in my vocabulary tonight. <laughs> is who will be the MVP in tonight's ball game. And certainly Lawrence Robinson will have to be an early candidate. Paul Sin has had some great numbers on the board so far. So maybe those two guys are going to be putting, or one of those two guys will be putting another trophy on the mantle. Minutes to go in the first half. Mayfair trails Bellflower 12 to nothing. But the Monsoons here with a crucial fourth down play. The turn and the give inside. He pops open. And that's uh, Dennis Heath. Dennis he's Heath. all the way down to the 27-yard line on the quick here off the right side of the line, just running behind Flood and Griff Belleville. And he bursted it open for 16 yards at a first down. Let's look at the replay, Don. Oh, they had the same little... Okay, you, you can, can see, see where it. Dennis comes right up the middle. He just blasts right through there. Turn on those turbos, and I'm going to hit these two backfield defenders. Awfully reminiscent of the play Sin scored on where he just popped out of there for Bellflower and there was nobody out there. Luckily for the Buccaneers, though, they had a couple of defenders back deep. Yeah, staying home and waiting for the play to develop. That always works, especially when you have somebody with twin turbos like that. Full house backfield for the Monsoons. Parton turns and gives on the same exact play. This time it's Morton, though, and he pounds down to the seven-yard line before he's dropped by Kevin Lazard. And Lazard doesn't have much to say to Morton, so two plays in a row, the Monsoons run that trap right behind the right side. Rob Flood and Griff Belleville opening a huge hole over there. Let's look at the quick replay. You can, replay. See, you can see Belleville and Flood right there opening Same the big hole. Same play, the big hole. And there goes the turbos again. And he runs right there, and he missed the and bear back trap. back to the action now. Parton rolling out. He's going to be oh. stopped by Thomas Mann off the play action. And now the Monsoons are going to be forced to call their last time out of the first half with 18 seconds to go. You think they might have tried to gone to the air there, but Parton tried to bootleg it around the, the right side. He couldn't get in. Thomas Mann stayed right with the play and made the tackle. I'm pretty much convinced that Mayfair is a ground running game, uh, has a ground game. Well, Parton hasn't shown much in the air so far tonight. Just uh, two of four on the evening. But we'll see what they choose to do on this next play. 
Fantastic. One thing I wanted to touch on a little earlier, Mike, you notice on those two uh, those two uh, up the middle plays that Martin just did, you notice how he was holding onto the ball so tight, and even though the player, the defenders, they grabbed him right on the arm where he was holding that ball, he didn't release until he got up and let the guy have it. Well, Maurice Morton is a strong guy, and unlike Eric Mitchell, who is a, a somewhat smaller in build and a lot quicker than Morton, he likes to have the ball out there where it doesn't obstruct his running, you know, the way his motion is. And mm -hmm. Morton just says, hey, I'll run you over. That's right. He'll head straight for you, and he says, hey, you're in my way. I'm coming through. So with 18 seconds to go, first and goal on the six-yard line for Mayfair, and they really need to take advantage of this opportunity right here. And, Don, they have no timeouts left in the first half, so if they can't get it in on this play, I would think they would come back to the line of scrimmage and throw the ball into the ground, trying to get the field goal unit out there for a field goal attempt. Having bypassed a shot at a field goal early in the first quarter after a nice drive. That would be the thing to do. We'll but see I, what Dave Parton does here on second and goal from the seven yard line. Look for a strong run. Parton drops the throw, looking, dropping over the middle into the corner of the end zone. It's incomplete. Ball intended for Danny Perez and he couldn't hang on over there. That ball came out of a shotgun, Mike. You can see where it just hit off his uh, top shoulder pad. I think it was his, his left shoulder pad. And the ball popped right up out of his hands. The third and goal, the ball sits on the seven yard line, on the Bellflower seven yard line. And you can see the official placing it down, maybe the seven and a half or close to the eight is th what separates the Mayfair Monsoons from their first score of the night. There you can see the clock, 14 seconds left. 12 nothing Bellflower, Mayfair trying to get on the board and make it a close game going into half with the momentum. Parton rolling the throw, throws into the end zone, touchdown! Perez with the catch. There you can see Parton rolling out to his left. He's got all day to throw. And out of the flanker spot is Perez, and he's going to make the catch over there right in front of 21 for Melthar. That's J.R. Ruggiero, and Ruggiero couldn't get over there in time. And Perez scooted into the end zone, and Parton seems to be down and a little hurt on the sidelines, or actually his teammates just congratulating him, and he's pretty fired up over there now. Phil Roberts is going to come on to boot the extra point for Mayfair, and if he converts, they're only five down at, ha at half time nine seconds to go in the first half here's the snap out of the hold of Perez the kick is up and it is good nine seconds to go in the first half we'll keep it right here with the score Bellflower 12 Mayfair 7 and we've got ourselves a football game big big score there for Mayfair they've got all the momentum going in at halftime now a lot of times when that happens the team comes out second half very fired up and plays a great half of football we'll have to see what happens at that in the second half tonight. And with only nine seconds left for the half. One thing that this is gonna do, Don, is it's gonna force Coach Mike Harrington of the Bellflower Buccaneers to go to the air in the second half. You can't keep it on the ground and play not to lose when you're only up by five. And they're gonna be forced to have Lawrence Robinson throw the football. Yeah, but you know what? They did that. They went. To, they stayed on the ground. They played a good ground game last week too. And uh, Sean Jones, he got injured in the last. Oh no, I think it was the, the fourth quarter. He was injured. Well, you got to remember, Sean Jones has hobbled this evening and has carried the ball only four times for nine yards. And he hobbled all the fourth quarter last week because of his running game, and he was shut down. So you probably want to save Jones for next week if you can. And here's an unusual formation now for Mayfair. Perhaps they'll, the onside kick is coming. Phil Roberts will kick it away. They've got eight men behind him. They've got a couple on the side. No, it's going to be a low line drive kick taken and dropped by Paul City. Picks up to the 15, the 20, coming to this side of the field. Gets away from one tackle, the 25, the 30. Finally brought down by Fapito Fapito over here on the side. And Time has run out. Time has run out in the first half. An exciting first half it has been with the score Bellflower 12. Mayfair 7, and we'll be back with some halftime stats right after this.
That's floor covering serving the mid cities with the finest floor and window covering since 1945. Your local Armstrong Floor Fashion Center by Holly's Brakes. Holly's Brakes, where you get safety and lasting quality at a reasonable price.